Thanks, Tim. Uh, glad to be here. So I'm happy to speak about our company, Imaging, who, as I think someone spoke, um, we've gone from two cents as early as uh, a few months ago now to 20 cents, I'm sorry, to something like 50 cents upwards. So um, it's great times for imaging. So the next couple of slides, please. Thank you. So a brief introduction to imaging. Um, uh, Mr. Ho Paul Hopper built imaging roughly in 2013 with the first iteration of our B-cell immunotherapy from the Medical University of Vienna. I joined the company straight from Genentech in 2015. And then in 2017, we were able to parlay our first uh, B-cell immunotherapies into the clinic that we call Hervax. We like the idea of turning on your own immune system against a particular cancer target. So we licensed in a whole slew of a portfolio from Ohio State University. And in 2019, after uh, Paul Hopper was able to sell Virolytics to Merck, we went on to look for an oncolytic virus and we ended up with the, one of the most powerful oncolytic viruses that are out there. And I'll be talking about the clinical design um, of that shortly. And as early as last month, we were thrilled to announce a new oncolytic virus that can be combined with a powerful drug that's called a CAR-T uh, in combination to abate solid tumors. Uh, next slide, please. So investment highlights, we now have three novel technology platforms. We have the B cell activating immunotherapies, the CF33 oncolytic viral therapy, and now oncolytics facing the cellular therapies. Our B cell technologies are already in the clinic and Hervax uh, with phase two, we've been able to gather meaningful data for gastric patients. We've completed enrollment into the phase two. We've already hit the progression-free survival events, and we will uh, hope to bring out the top line data as early as August. Um, PD-1 vax, we're currently dose escalating in phase one in a non-small cell lung cancer population, and we hope to progress that into other setting here soon. And CF33, our oncolytic viral therapy, we have two iterations and one is currently, um, I've spoke about this, uh, currently uh, looking to get patients in as early as in the next few months. And then vaccinia, the most powerful virus that we have, we're currently looking at doing a toxicology study to parlay that into the clinic very soon. And as I said, we were able to license in a, an oncolytic virus that carries a gene that's expressed on the cell surface so that uh, something as powerful as a CAR-T can combine and obliterate solid tumors. Next slide, please. So oncolytics is a, an oncolytic virus that has a special gene, a transgene protein that's called CD19. We were able to get a worldwide exclusive license for this novel technology. And we saw compelling preclinical um, science, even uh, on the cover of Science Translational Medicine. Um, it's peer reviewed, it's, uh, it's heavily tested by scientists. So we're really fortunate to get this molecule and we hope to parlay this and put this into patients um, as early as 2022. Next slide, please. So as I said, three platforms. So Oncarlytics being that CF33, our oncolytic virus with the CD19 um, flag or expressor, and it's in, it will be in a CAR-T or other CD19 directed combination. With CF33, our oncolytic virus, there's two iteration. We have CheckBack, that's an arm virus. It gives a direct payload of a checkpoint inhibitor directly to the cell. And we'll, we'll be trialing this in triple negative breast cancer. And then Vaccinia, the parenovirus, the most powerful virus that we have. And I'll go into to that a little bit later. Uh, B cell immunotherapy, Hervax in phase two, just rapidly finishing up the PFS data cleaning. We are looking forward to obtaining the overall survival. It's a double-edged sword really because the longer the patients live, the better the data. So 
uh, we're simply just waiting on some more patients to um, reach that awful setting of, of overall survival so that we can cut the data. PD-1 vax, um, we have seen some early signs of efficacy and, and beautiful data to be had. Uh, we're currently dose escalating. And, and what you need to know about phase ones is, is, is all about putting as much drug as we can into patients because we know that it can be much more effective. However, just balancing that toxicology or tox or side effects. And to date, we have not seen any, uh, any real side effects of concern. So we're dose escalating as high as we can. Next slide, please. As you can see, we have a very full portfolio and pipeline, and we have patents running out as late as 2030, 20, 20, uh, meaning we have a large runway in order to develop this medication, and a pharma company that it will eventually take us over will have a long runway to market this, these drugs. Next slide, please. So B-cell immunotherapies, I'll just briefly go into this. Uh, next slide. So monoclonal antibodies are currently uh, marketed. Um, my former company, Genentech, has Hercept and Avastin. Uh, BMS has um, several different monoclonal antibodies, and they garner anywhere between 8 billion to 20 billion a year in cells. The issue with monoclonal antibody is there's synthetic antibodies that are injected into humans as opposed to our B cell uh, derived antibodies that are semi natural. Your body then creates the antibodies against these certain targets. We're able to gather efficacy at this point, given that we've got PFS and our earlier interim data on HERVAX proven our concept or our platform of the B-cell showing uh, clear efficacy against the standard of care, which is chemo. I love the usability here. I like the idea of patients being able to come in every three to six months for a, a small infusion to just get booster visits as opposed to sitting every two weeks um, at a cold you know, hospital room getting a two-hour infusion on these monoclonal antibodies. The cost of goods is one-tenth of the cost of goods to make our product, which gives a lot of flexibility for a pharma company when they are able to distribute this in the market. Next slide, please. So we're currently in phase two, finishing up our, our secondary endpoint, the progression-free survival. We've, we have a lot of safety and tolerability, and we were able to show that there's a whopping uh, immune response, and that's exactly what we had anticipated with this drug, and it's behaving quite nicely. We're just now waiting for that overall survival in order to um, close this study and gather all the data that we need. Next slide, please. We were able to publish this at the American Association of Cancer Research. You know, uh, it's kind of like the Oscars or the Comic-Con of, um, of, of cancer care. And we were able to show the world that you want in that Kaplan-Meier curve, these, that little graph in the middle there, you want to see an early separation of patients living longer, the tumors not growing as fast as the comparator. And we were able to to show this with a whopping immune uh, response. Next slide, please. So as I said, all patients had high levels of antibodies uh, with minimal booster uh, visits every three months or so. And that Kaplan-Meier curve uh, is a statistical um, outline and it shows an early separation and that's exactly what you wanna see. Next slide, please. And PD-1 VAC, this is an anti-PD-1, it's so immune, a checkpoint inhibitor like product, but again, it's your B cells creating the antibodies. And we're currently in cohort three, uh, really interrogating the highest dose. Um, and we've not had any sort of safety issues thus far. We've actually had some patients show up with clear, complete response, meaning they had no residual tumors. So um, I'm really happy for that patient that have come in and, and, and has uh, gained benefit from our drug. Next slide, please. That uh, study is open in six centers, three centers in Australia and three centers in the US. Next slide, please. And our oncolytic virus, so next slide. In the simplest way, uh, our oncolytic virus works to infect solid tumors or malignant cells. Our virus are designed and engineered to only infect malignant 
uh, solid tumors. And when it infects the cells, the malignant cells, it multiplies on an accelerated rate. And then your cells, your cancer cells then implode or explode and, and gather more uh, viruses to the other infected cells. Next slide, please. And we are thrilled that we are going into triple negative breast cancer because it's one of the deadliest breast cancers and we are due to start our phase one. That's that dose escalation, finding that beautiful efficacy versus toxicity and safety profile of our, of our uh, drug um, in the clinic very soon. Um, I'm hoping that we can have news out as early as a few months from now. Next slide, please. And our most powerful parental virus, this is a very large, ambitious study in where we'll throw it against so many different kinds of solid tumors, including head and neck. We've got advanced melanoma, triple negative breast cancer, lung cancer, bladder, gastric, colorectal, renal. Uh, we may even put some pancreatic cancer in there. And what's so great about the study is we're not only looking at it from intratumoral, we're also looking at it from intravenous, which is a easier dosing regimen for uh, clinicians. We'll dose escalate both. As soon as we clear a dose, we will then combine um, again in that intratumoral and intravenous setting. So we're quite thrilled about this study. And our CAR-T uh, solid tumor challenge. So one of the challenges of the approved CAR-Ts, the CD19 CAR-Ts, is that they're all against blood tumors. So CD19 is expressed in hem hematologic diseases or blood diseases, blood cancers, and the four approved CD19 CAR-Ts only face towards uh, hematologic diseases. The problem here is that um, solid tumors does not express CD19. So what we have uh, figured out and the genius people at City of Hope have figured out is our oncolytic virus can have the CD19 transgene in it, infects only solid tumors and then raises this particular flag of CD19 such that these powerful CD19 directed CAR Ts can come and obliterate it. Next slide, please. So as I said, there are four approved CD19 CAR Ts out there, and these are name brand uh, pharma companies like Novartis, Gilead, Kite, and BMS, as you can see. They uh, have, um, blood cancers are roughly about 10% of, of tumor types or cancer types, and it works roughly in about 60 to 90% to give a response, meaning these blood uh, cancers can derive something like 60 to 90% curative rates with these drugs. Now, if you can imagine if we can get solid tumors to react in that way, that'll be revolutionary. And if not uh, the most significant uh, drug that you could possibly imagine. Next slide, please. Simplest way, solid our oncolytic virus infects solid cancer cells, shuttles the CD19 flag. When you add a powerful drug like a CAR-T, it just eradicates cancer cells and especially in solid tumors. Next slide, please. Patents going out to again, you know, 2038. Next slide. And we have significant milestones. These are just a few, and I put 12 to 12, 24 months, but really in the next few months, you should see uh, some significant milestone news up and coming. Next slide. And uh, I believe our share price, you know, a few days ago was at 32.5 cents. It might be a little bit higher today. And I'm happy to report that Paul Hopper and myself are in the top five holders of the company. And I believe that is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Leslie. You had a lot to get through there. So um, thanks for your time. Um, thanks, Tim. In regards to your buying and Paul Hopper's buying, and you've obviously got a very large retail shareholder base, very loyal retail shareholder base. What do you have to do to attract uh, institutions onto the register? I think it's, you know, for me, it's all about the science. If you lead with the science, the value will build. And that's exactly uh, what's happened here. And that, that will be a continuation of what I plan to do. And you, you recently made a new appointment, Dr. Monil Shah. Um, he's clearly joined in a business capacity rather than a clinical one. Does that point to partnerships as part of the road forward? Look, it's, a, it's market sensitive, you know, um, in regards yep. to partnership. However, Monil Shah, Dr. Monil Shah comes with significant amount of cellular therapy experience. 
and he is friends with everyone in the far. He's so well uh, connected. Um, we are thrilled to have him. And is it possible? There's lots of questions, lots of technical questions here on PD1. Can you give us a little bit more of an update there? We're currently looking at phase uh, cohort three, which is our highest dose. And I think this is where we'll see a significant amount of activity and data. And so that's exactly what a phase one you know, is all about, getting that, that dose to move forward with. And we're hurriedly trying to get that data, but we wanna be very selective about the patient population we wanna go into, which is lung cancer. So we've had some uh, patients that have failed other lines of therapy and have come on ours and reap benefits. So we wanna continue that on. So we're being highly selective about the patients that we put in our cohort three. And does that mean all that there's a question here specifically, does that mean you've dosed all the, um, all the patients in cohort three yet? No, so they're currently in screening. So as I've said, they're quite, we're being really selective about how we choose our patients because we want to reap the most amount of data that we can so we can move forward with other combination and other studies.